Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? So, I'm going to build a cupola for our friends to sit on top of the roof of their barn. So the first thing I need to do is climb up the ladder and measure the pitch of the roof. So, let's get started. So for the cupola, there are two measurements that I need. I need the length of the roof and I need the pitch. So to measure the pitch, I'm using a digital angle gauge and that's going to give me the difference between the two slopes of the roof. And it's coming in at 142 degrees. So to get the pitch, I'll divide that by two. That gives me 71 degrees. I'll subtract that from 90 and that gives me 19 degrees. So the pitch of the roof is 19 degrees. When I bought this pressure treated lumber about four months ago, it was really wet. Now it's about 6%, so it's ready to be used. I'm starting with the base and I'm setting the angle on the saw to cut at 19 degrees to match the pitch of the roof. I'm gonna build the cupola in three sections so that I'll be able to carry it up onto the roof. I'm cutting a 19 degree miter for the bottom of the leg and a 90 degree cut on the top. For the other part of the leg, I'm cutting a 19 degree bevel on the bottom. I'm going to use a whole bunch of half lap joints, so I'm setting my dado set to the right height to cut halfway through the 2x4s. These are the cross pieces to tie the legs together, and I'm cutting these to be 34 and a half inches wide. Now I'm drilling holes for the screws to make it easier to screw together. and now I will attach all the cross pieces. A general rule of thumb is that for every foot of uninterrupted roof length, you wanna have one and a half inches of cupola size. So the roof of this barn is 24 feet, so I'm going to build the cupola to be 36 inches, 24 by 1.5. So I've made the dimensions of the base to be 34 and a half by 34 and a half. That way when I apply the three quarter inch trim all around, That'll add three quarters of an inch to each side for a total of 36 inches. Now I'm starting on the next section, which will basically be a cube that sits on top of the base. And this will be the section that holds the vents. And again, I'm gonna join everything with half lap joints. I want the opening on all four sides to be the same width. So when I have a butt joint like this, this side is three and a half inches, and on this side it's five and a half inches. So I'm going to rip one and a half inches off each of these four pieces. And now I'm putting the pieces together to form the cube. By the way, I have a new microphone that I'm using in this video. One of my viewers, Dana Tucker, has about 45 years of audio recording experience. He's a real pro when it comes to uh, recording spoken word. And he offered to give me an extra Audio-Technica Pro 70 mic that he had lying around. And he lives not too far away from me, so I couldn't pass up on that deal. So thank you, Dana. I'll put a link to Dana's YouTube channel in the description. He offers a free in-depth podcasting course and a lot of videos on how to get better results with your, with your recording. So now I'm cutting all the pieces for the vents. There'll be one vent on each side. and I'm gonna angle the slats at 45 degrees.
These boards are gonna form the outer perimeter to hold the slats, and I wanna make sure that everything lines up, so I'm putting all the boards together and I'm drawing lines across using my square. And now I'm cutting dados at a 45 degree angle. I can only go part way across, and then I have to flip the miter gauge to the other side and then continue the cut on the very end. One thing that's kind of tricky after cutting the dados for one side of the frame is that you have to flip the miter gauge around 45 degrees in the other direction to cut the other side. Now I want to cut a 45 degree bevel along each edge of the slat. One trick that I have is I cover up the opening at the front of the table saw with a magnetic strip that helps to improve the dust collection. And now the vents are ready for glue up. It's a little tricky to get everything lined up, but as long as the cuts are properly aligned, it's not that difficult. I'm making four of these vents and luckily I had just enough clamps to clamp everything up in one night. And now I'm just doing a test fit to make sure that all four vents will fit into their designated place. When I cut these bottom slats, I meant to cut them wider so that they would stick out so that when the rainwater falls, it would drip away from the bottom of the cupola. But I forgot to do that. And so what I'm gonna do to, to recover from that mistake is I've, I've made some additional pieces that I can glue on. And that's actually not such a bad thing because it's gonna make it a lot easier to cut these end pieces so that I don't have to notch them out. And it's actually tricky to cut these because it's just like installing crown molding where you have some complex compound angles. And so I've done a couple of test pieces just to show you what it'll look like. And, and there they come together very nicely. So this is not a 45 degree angle that you might think because this is on an angle. It's not easy to figure out what these two angles would be. There's an angle this way for the miter and there's an angle for the bevel as well. So I looked online for a chart that will tell you how to cut these angles and it turns out that the miter should be 35.26 degrees and the bevel should be 30 degrees. Who would have figured? I use a board clamped to my miter gauge that I've already run through the blade to know exactly where the blade is going to land. So that after marking my piece to know exactly where I want to cut, I can line it up with that mark and I can cut very accurately. Now I'll glue the pieces on and use a brad nailer to secure them in place. I should mention that there is another way to cut those compound angles. Uh, I used a table saw, which is a flat down method. Um, you can also use a miter saw. When you're using a miter saw, you can place the piece of wood that you're cutting into the miter saw and orient it the same way that it will be sitting when it's installed. And then you can use a regular 45 degree cut. Now I want to caulk along each of the dados and also along the glue line that I just created to make sure that there's no possibility for water to seep in. And I'll start the painting process while the build is still underway. And I will begin with a coat of primer on both the front and the back. So now I'm getting ready to build the roof and I'm starting with some two by sixes that will lay horizontally on top of the vents. I guess this is what you would call a cap plate. And then I'll attach that on top of the cube. Now for the roof, I'm going to build a pyramid hip roof and it's going to have a pitch of 30 degrees. 
I probably could have used 19 degrees to match the pitch of the barn, but I just didn't think that that was steep enough to give it the right visual appeal. I'm cutting a 45 degree bevel from both sides on the end. It creates a little bit of a point, but that way I can apply the fascia afterward and everything will be lined up nicely. Now this piece is running at a 30 degree angle, but I want it to sit properly on the cap plate. So I'm using my jigsaw to cut a section out. And now I'm cutting a 30 degree bevel on each side of the rafters and that will allow the plywood to sit properly on the rafter. Normally I would just screw these rafters together where they meet, but because there's a weather vane that's going to be running through the top of the roof and in through the rafters, um, I'm going to use a, a metal bracket to secure them. And that way there are no screws that are going to interfere with the hole that I'm about to drill. After tediously applying the primer with a paintbrush, I decided to give uh, spraying a try. So now I'm using the exterior paint with a sprayer. So now it's time to cut the plywood. And this can be a little tricky because it's involving compound angles again. I decided to use the same crown molding calculator, but you have to be careful if you do that because the math is more or less the same, but you have to be careful that you don't mix up the miter and the bevel because it's a different application. Um, so in this case, I have a 30 degree pitch on the roof and the pieces of plywood are joined at 90 degree angles. And that gives me a miter of 37 and three quarter degrees and a bevel of 26 and a half degrees. And if I made all the cuts right, the pieces will fit together correctly. And now I'll cut this piece off horizontally so that I can install the soffit underneath. This is one of the corners of the soffit and I've decided to use screw hole plugs, sc plastic screw hole plugs. And so I'm drilling a 3 8 inch hole part way through to make room for the screw hole plug to go in afterwards. Now I'm temporarily screwing the vents in place to get ready to make all the trim. To make the trim that goes around the cube, it's fairly easy. It involves cutting a 45 degree bevel on the bottom, uh, marking the appropriate length and then cutting 90 degrees across the top. All the corners are the same, so it's quite easy. And then I'll glue them up with a 45 degree miter joint. I only have one of these Tac Life right angle clamps, but it's all I really need. It has a nice base to hold the wood vertically without tipping over. The trim that goes along the bottom is a little trickier. First, I'm cutting a 19 degree bevel along the bottom, and then on the side piece, I'm cutting a 19 degree miter. These bottom pieces are a little trickier because you have to make sure that all of the angles are oriented properly. For the glue up, it's a little more difficult to clamp these, so I'm using glue and a brad nailer. For the four side panels that are attached to the base, all of the pieces have a 45 degree bevel along the top edge, and then two of the pieces have a 19 degree bevel along the bottom. And I've marked the remaining two pieces so that I can cut out a section with my jigsaw to make room for the peak of the roof. The last thing to cut are the fascia boards and I'm cutting a 30 degree bevel along the top edge and a 45 degree miter on each corner. It's probably been a little difficult to envision what this is going to look like so here's a preview of the assembled product. So I gotta ask, would you make it? <laughs>